Today we will be speaking with Chad Michael Workman. Chad is from Stillwell, Oklahoma, and he's currently serving as the Vice President for the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, otherwise known as ACES. Chad is also an ambassador for the National Action Council for Minorities in Engineering. He is also an Engineering Career Awareness Program Fellow. Please help me in welcoming Chad Workman. Thank you, Chad, for being here today with us. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, so if you're ready to get started, I am. Um, and just let me know. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. I think everything's working fine. Yes, I think so too. Okay, let's get started. So question number one, what does diversity mean to you? Diversity to me is putting forward like acceptance and respect to every individual you meet. Um, understanding that each person sees the world differently based on, or differently based on culture, gender, age, religion, sex, uh, economic status, previous experiences even. Um, and any other ideals that that person might have, uh, diversity is like reaching out and exploring and embracing the di those differences in between each individual on a personal level. No, yeah, definitely. Um, I would have to agree with you on everything you said for sure. And question number two, what is it like being a minority on campus, particularly within the College of Engineering? I don't really think many people know I'm a minority. Like they don't know I'm Cherokee which is completely fine. I don't want to be singled out or recognized more or less because I'm native. Um, sometimes I feel strange or out of place. Um, I grew up in a like primarily native, I think it was 80% native in at my high school. Um, so it, it's definitely like a completely different culture at the university. And it's something that I didn't really take account into whenever I left home. Um, other than this, being native on campus has been an extremely positive experience. Um, based on just help from my tribe, paying for college and being part of minority focused groups and minority focused scholarships has really helped like bring me this far in my college experience. Oh, I love that. Um, that's so good to hear. I'm glad that your experience has been really well. Question number three, um, is there anything ACES is doing um, right now to improve diversity and inclusion, whether that's on or off campus? ACES is a pretty small group for natives in the STEM field on campus. Our goal is to help natives or anyone who is really interested in the many different cultures of native peoples uh, find careers with companies who are invested in those cultures. An example would that be the ACES National Conference, which is three days of networking and knowledge sharing about natives in the STEM field now and how we can prepare to improve the STEM workforce from a native point of reference. Wow, that's awesome. I always love hearing about the national conferences that like ACES and SHIP, NESBY and SWE, like that they um, that they host every year. I think it's a really great opportunity, especially yeah. to meet other people that are like you. So that's always fun. My favorite part of the national conference is probably like the uh, smoking circle or tobacco circle. Um, my culture, like Cherokees, don't specifically do the, the tobacco circle, but I'm pretty sure it's a pretty Navajo thing. And a lot of the people who go to the ACES conference are Navajo or Western uh, tribes. They have different things they do. Um, like people up North, they'll set in like the sweat houses and that's what their tobacco circle is. But Navajo, they do a tobacco circle and we set around as, a, as an old men society. They do it for women as well. And we like share what we're going through in college right now what like tribulations we're facing, um, how or what we've been doing to improve in that. It even comes down to like, hey, I have a kid and I'm having, I'm struggling to like stay sober, stuff like that. It's a like a time to get together as men and like work through issues um, and bring each other up, which I really like doing that every time I go to the conference. I love to hear stuff like that. Um, I feel like culture is like so important in like for people that like that kind of still uphold like their specific culture um, like within like themselves or their family. Uh, I love it. Like, um, I don't know, I'm like a big culture type of person. So I, I love um, going to events that involve um, my, like my Mexican culture, yeah. or I love just like being involved in things or putting on events myself or participating in different types of um, events. So that's, 
Uh, I love to hear that type of stuff. Definitely, like, every time I go anywhere to, like, live for a while, like, I went to Ohio for an internship, and I tried to become part of, like, or, like, introduce myself into the native tribes there, and the things that they did, they don't do tobacco circles, like I was saying, they do sweat lodges, so they have these, like, wooden round houses that they just, it's like a sauna, and they do a similar thing where they go and just talk and work through issues, and I, like, I did that there, too, and it was so cool. It's just different tribes do different things. And I like emerging myself and whatever I'm like at the location I'm at at that time, try to learn as much as I possibly can. Oh my gosh. Yes, that is so interesting. And I feel like, I feel like, so growing up, I used to like dance to like traditional Mexican folkloric dancing. And it's, um, I always like explain to like some of my friends how, even though like it's that's how it's labeled for for Mexico like Mexican folkloric dancing we have like different types of styles based on like the area of Mexico and it's like similar like you know like the cultures are similar but like they're still very unique in their own way so I think that's just like so interesting I love love that oh okay so question number four what does ACEs mean to you as a minority? Yeah, um, firstly, we're a group on campus for people to express their heritage freely. Um, ACEs has done a lot of great things to help me future my success in college, um, but the group has a feel of inclusion and individuality. We're a super small group right now, so it lets everyone who wants a voice in ACEs have a voice in ACEs. It's like a little pocket of still Oklahoma. It's like a little pocket at home. Oh, that's super great to hear. Um, I know, like, SHIP, um, like, I know, so, like, for Hispanics, it's, like, family is, like, a big structural value, like, within, like, our households and our culture, and, like, SHIP just carries that, like, that whole family structure, and it makes me feel so comforting, like, being away from home, um, so that's always a good thing to hear, you know, that ACES is, like, that support system for people, and, um, I, I love to hear that. So question number five, um, is there anything in particular that you would like for other people to know about ACES? ACES, while it's primarily a like, it's for Native Americans, we accept anyone who wants to join. The main goal of ACES is to like foster and founder a culture of Native heritage. And unfortunately, we can't do a very good job because we don't have all 200 tribes there, but we still try to be inclusive to whatever culture or whatever belief we can in that group. So anyone can join. It's for anyone. um, And we try to help any way we can. Thank you. I think that that type of information is always very valuable, especially like I feel like when people look at our minority organizations um, in the college, they're like, I I don't think I can join because I think it's just like for a certain group of people. But I feel like really like the mission behind the minority organizations is what what they're advocating for and like working for is for a better future for those minority groups. But I mean, they need the help of everybody. So I think that's that's always a good reminder for students and faculty and staff as well. I actually think half of our group, like most of the people in our group are not specifically native or specifically they can't claim native. It's just that they've been raised with it in some way or they've known about it or they've been taught certain traditions about it. You don't like some people are like, oh, I got my citizenship card. Um, that's not like a requirement. <laughs> that's not something that anyone cares about really just as long as you like identify with that oh wow i didn't i didn't know that but that that's really nice to hear um question number six the words equality and equity get easily interchanged most people do not fully understand the difference between both is there anything you wish others would know on equity for minorities specifically our students um, I'm pretty sure everyone knows like, like what equity and equality is. Everyone sees the pictures and like, oh, look, this guy needs more boxes or this guy needs a, like a taller ladder. Um, but to me, um, 
equality for minorities. Equality is what the university should strive for in all of their students. Equity is how we or is how we're going to achieve that equality. Not everyone's situation is the same at the U of A, and the U of A should try to bring everyone up to the same level. Uh, for an example, I come from Stowell, Oklahoma. It's one of the poorest little towns in Oklahoma um, with reading and math proficiency proficiencies in the bottom 10% of the state. And Oklahoma is not really known for its like stellar schools. Um, most students who come out of my high school who want to go to college are severely under-equipped and underfunded. Um, the goal of equity is to give students like that who come from bottom of the barrel situations the tools to succeed even with all their obstacles without this the stem job force will or the stem job force diversity will stagnate and stay the exact same as it is right now i definitely agree with you um i myself am very grateful for ecap um i don't think i would be in college without ecap because i didn't really attend like a stem inclined school and I'm from a very rural area, so it's really hard obtaining resources, especially when you're like a first generation student um, and trying to like afford college. So I'm really thankful for ECAP and other programs on campus that um, that are for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah, it's really hard whenever students are very smart or maybe they're like valedictorian, salutatorian, or whatever the top 10% of their class, but that doesn't mean they're ahead. That doesn't mean that they have all of the opportunities that everyone else would have. Like um, I graduated like pretty high in my percentage, but I didn't have like half the tools or half the classes that a lot of students had coming in um, just because it wasn't available. Like if I, if I had it, I would have been able to like take advantage of it, but it wasn't there. So I'm, I'm super grateful for ECAP, ECAP, um, NACME, everyone who's reached out to help me go to college. I super appreciate it. Yes, no, I, I really, I, I, I really can relate to that for sure, just because I felt very intimidated when I was like up here for my interview weekend, because some students had like taken like calculus, uh, like one and two basically already, and um, they were like super ahead, and my high school offered like three AP courses, and I was like, no, like I'm so behind, um, but all is well now, all is well. Uh, question number seven. Finally, what do you wish others would know about diversity and inclusion? Um, I want others to know that it's not all about like big programs or trying to fix everything at once and rounding it all into a simple little package that you do this and it, it fixes it. Um, start with something small, start with the people around you, the people you talk to, the people you work with, or even see regularly, um, ask them about their culture, if they're willing, and like, if they're willing to share. Um, and this is for everyone, not just minorities or people of different cultures, ask anyone, anyone you know, because you don't really know about that person until you talk to them about it. Um, if we had that from every single person that you talk to on campus, or every single person that you know personally, I feel like the rest of diversity and inclusion would just fall in place. Um, if we could get the base down of simple interpersonal connections with people, the people you know, um, and trying to understand them as best as you can, it wouldn't be that hard from there on, from there on out. Thank you, I really, I do agree with you with that. I feel like it starts kind of like, like really small and it starts like, I guess with us, like one-on-one -on -one as people. So. Yeah. It really takes a lot to try to like put yourself in somebody else's shoes to understand their perspective and their viewpoint. So thank you. Thank you for that answer. It was really good.